The fourth week started off slow. At 6.50 today, another excavation was complete. But that's about all that happened as far as the base was concerned. I spent several hours today looking over footage from Operation Banished Crone, mainly to see if I could glean anything from the Thin Man. They had a strange finesse to their movements. They didn't really move like humans, not even like troopers. More like humanoid cats or lizards. They don't so much run as they almost glide over the ground. They seemed to move their legs to push themselves forward, as if they didn't even need to be resisting gravity. When they dropped down from tiny airborne UFOs, we found out that's how they achieved this, it's as if the massive fall was a mere hop down a few steps. When dinner was served in the cantina today, the two doctors sat down with me. They didn't have anything important to report or anything, we just had a casual chat and shot some fun at how we're basically the stars of a War of the Worlds knockoff. We went our separate ways back to work after that, but it was a refreshing moment of good spirits amidst a fairly daunting and gloomy workday. I was looking around the control center today, trying to find a magical call the councilman button. I don't know what I was expecting, but surely if anyone could get in contact with that shadowy spokesperson, I would be authorized to do so. I asked Bradford about it, and he told me that they see everything and know everything that happens in the base, and worldwide, regarding the alien threat. They know when they need to get in contact with us, and only do so in those moments. A chill stabbed me right in the spine, even though I intellectually knew this information before, but only now did it really hit me how manipulative these shadow people are. I was almost shocked at how Bradford could be telling me this with such a little emotion. I wonder if he's worked with them before. I was curious to see how the satellites were chugging along today, so I went down to take a look. We already have one of those puppies over the USA, but I haven't seen it with my own eyes. They are surprisingly small contraptions, and their dimensions are only a few meters in either axis. Flat, photovoltaic panels constitute most of their size. They had the body and mechanical elements finished already, but the internal electronics have not yet been assembled. A few more days will be required. Dr. Shen was trying to explain to me exactly how they are capable of detecting alien UFOs, but time and time again I just couldn't understand. Not to his discredit, he is a doctor, not a teacher. As we were parting ways, he jokingly said, Maybe we should launch you along with it, so you can see exactly what it does. As I was returning to the command center, I overheard some jovial singing coming from the, I thought empty, cantina. I looked inside, and a few people were congregated in one corner, and they were singing happy birthday. I recognized one of them as Ruki Yoka Yamazaki, whom I haven't really had an opportunity to get acquainted with yet. I shamelessly intruded with a smile on my face. Apparently, our birthday boy was a janitor called Mr. Taggart, and the chef made the group a cake far more extravagant than what we were getting every day. Still, they treated me to a slice, and I figured I didn't really have anything better to do, so I spent an hour or two with them. Corporal McKay was let go from the infirmary just in time for today's training. I followed the group of operatives down to the shooting range, to see how they were doing. McKay specifically seemed in a sour mood, but she wouldn't really tell me why. I was wondering if her confidence was shaken by the past few days, but she didn't seem to be performing any worse than usual. Later on, they were summoned topside for practice maneuvers or some such, so I let them get to it and returned to the command center. I didn't find Bradford there. I was told he had fallen ill with some viral infection which had also stricken down a few other central operators, so to speak. He was still fulfilling his duties from their quarter today, just in a very tired and irate manner. I felt a sting in my neck, wondering where this virus could have come from. Clearly, the most likely candidate was someone coming down from the surface. But the paranoid part of me was conjuring dark scenarios. What if this infection was caused due to exposure to some alien microbes brought home from the bodies of our enemies. 
just like in, well, War of the Worlds. I can't seem to stop thinking about that book. But surely the science team were taking the necessary precautions to keep us safe from such harm, if this was indeed the origin, right? Another empty day on the scanner, but it did not fill me with confidence. This is by far the largest gap in time between alien attacks up to this point. Are they preparing for a big assault? Are they waiting for reinforcements to arrive? Are they trying to figure out where they went wrong and how to change up their tactics? The dark skies, silent as ever, were not giving me any answers. Yep, I went up to the surface in the middle of the night again. Restless and anxious, I cannot get my head around what these veiled conspirators are planning. I think my mood had gotten to some other people in the command center, and tensions seemed high. It's as if we all knew something was coming soon. Well, nothing did come soon, at least not today. What did come soon was Dr. Shen up to my seat. Well, nothing's changed in that we're, we're late. He just wanted to assure me that the satellites were almost done and will be ready to be launched on March 31st. Still, the uplink will not be operational on time. I'm not sure exactly what his reason for telling me this was, but this did inspire me to take a look down into the science division to see how the progress on the beam weapon systems were coming along. Still fairly conceptual stuff, but I did get to take a look at a finished schematic of the actual laser emission device. Unwieldy and impractical, but it did look promising. Not that I could make out much of what was on that blueprint. This calmed me down a little. And this is the day when something did come. At 3.55 hours, simultaneous abductions in three locations around the globe. I decided to send the squad to Ottawa for two reasons. Firstly, the panic levels seemed to be the highest there, and also they would reward us with engineers. While we had enough at the moment to construct one satellite relay, the faster we could get more of them up and running, the better. The site of engagement was a straight bridge over Ottawa River. I never really knew that the city bore the name of the river's shores on which it was built. Anyway, much like on Operation Banished Chrome, we could only really move in one direction. This, along with my previous anxieties, had me quite on edge this whole time. But in retrospect, it was one of the more business-as-usual missions we've had. The bridge was full of abandoned cars, some even damaged, but most unscathed. One even had a running engine still. I wonder what exactly happened here. The new recruit, Dubois, spotted two sectates first, along with a melt canister. Unfortunately, the only good cover we had was this blue pickup truck. The rest was pretty naff. The hostiles were amidst some bigger vehicles, so I decided to wait with overwatch ready. However, my mistake was in positioning my troops. The sectoids did advance, but they had friends. Only one of them opened fire, though and heavily injured the flanked McKay. Dubois kept a cool head and demolished three enemies with one rocket, as well as one truck that won't be driving ever again. Someone's gonna miss it, but human lives were saved, I was telling myself. Fournier mopped up the trouble with another crazy shot I was not expecting her to hit again. Seems like XCOM is back in business. First things first, Wilson used that medikit to help McKay. She still wasn't looking too sharp, but she will live. We resorted back to overwatch creeping across the battlefield, before Wilson marked two more x-rays. We advanced to slightly better positions, and could clearly see the sectoids do this purple magic thing again. Dr. Shen was reading a spike of energy coming off of the two, but couldn't really tell me what effect this would have. The following sequence of events was quite inept from both sides. We missed two shots and couldn't really get a good angle for more, so we tossed down the smoke grenade to obscure our positions until we could attack again. Only one shot came and a twist. I wanted Chapurnov to fire another rocket where I suspected the other hostile to be standing, based off where the purple rays were coming from. He hit the mark and this somehow killed the closer sectoid as well, despite being nowhere near the blast radius. 
Shen again told me this death was caused by the portions of energy radiating between the two. I don't know how he knew this, but that's a good piece of intel to have. And now we were back to the good old slow advance. Take a reload, take in the scenery, maybe have a nice cup of tea while we're at it. After a fairly long trek, we've located the remaining two sectoids. I'm almost tired of saying it. Do the aliens have any other troopers? I'm almost disappointed by the ingenuity they've shown off so far. This time, we were the ones in position to safely wait out an advance. The grey alien skittering around the darkness flashed its hide to Fournier for a lick too long, and then showed off all the blood that used to be inside of it. The second alien came soon, and channeled its inner Neo to dodge absolutely every bullet hailed at it. McKay was the one to finish the operation, despite her injuries. Bye -bye. Another day, another successful operation. I wish I could say something more, but the aliens really aren't posing much of a threat to us. I'm starting to feel like we've learned all their tricks, like they're bumbling buffoons who couldn't tie their shoelaces if they tried. That's overconfidence speaking. I know they're capable of so much more. Then why aren't they showing their hand? As tradition dictated, I went out onto the landing pad again at 6.25. It was starting to feel routine. Routine is the first step to failure. Sun Tzu once said, all warfare is based on deception. How do I break out of this to keep our minds sharp? Keep the aliens guessing just as much as they're keeping us. I'll get to that later. For now, we had another small celebration before a quiet day in the command center. <laughs> 